So how did we get here? Well, that's a long story, so let's rewind a bit and go back to the start. So let's start at the beginning. Flight 5, things didn't quite go as planned. Last time, I forgot to fully insert the power plug into the rocket. As a result, the flight controller didn't turn on, the gimbaling system didn't do anything, and the rocket just kind of did whatever it felt like, which was crash. So, following that flight, I had to do a lot of work to get things ready to go again. I had to replace the legs because they broke on hitting the ground with the engine still on. I had to replace the thrust vector gimbal because it melted into nothing. And I had to upgrade the gimbal so that that didn't happen again. Printing new legs, no problem. Just make a few more, screw them back in, we're good to go. Luckily, I also had spares. I had to build a brand new thrust vector gimbal, and this time I ended up using some insulation to protect it from the heat of the motor. Inside the engine mount, the rocket motor is heating up the plastic around it. And because the plastic is all made to be 3D printed, it has a pretty low melting temperature. To prevent future meltdowns, I chose to use cork. Cork is a great insulator and it's super light. So in a small quantity, it can completely insulate the engine mount from the hot engine. On top of this, it's actually used in the real aerospace industry. Heat shields on actual spacecraft that survive re-entry are made out of cork. And even on the space shuttle and SLS, some of the booster is covered in cork to protect it from the heat of the engine exhaust. The new gimbal uses a one millimeter cork insulation layer. I've now put this into all my future gimbals because it just seems to work so well. Between flights, I had to fix my launch pad. Now, some of the parts on the launch pad were not quite up to snuff and were not strong enough to take the repeated loading and unloading in and out of the car. I added higher strength brass inserts into them that makes them more adjustable and helps me level the launch pad for flight. The next launch gave me an opportunity to use a lot of the new stuff I had picked up. I had a new camera, I had spotlights to light up the launch site and the rocket, and I had stakes. So these orange stakes go on all four corners of the launch pad and they anchor it to the ground so it doesn't move at all. This helps reduce some of the wiggle of the rocket taking off and the strong back retracting on the launch pad. With everything in order, it was finally time to fly again. And I even was able to get a few extra people to come out as spectators. Everything's going fine until the strong back goes to detach. There's a small umbilical with two wires that connects to the rocket. These two wires then have to disconnect and fall away from the rocket so that they're out of the way and it can launch cleanly off the pad. For this flight, these wires failed to disconnect. So they ended up pulling the whole vehicle over with them and the strong back. You can see right here, they're still connected as the launch pad begins its launch sequence. The clamps completely let go and the tower takes the whole assembly with it. At this point, the engine's already lit and no matter what, the rocket is taking off. It arcs over the launch pad and buries itself into the ground. Overall, not great, not terrible. Only two of the legs were broken during the crash and the nose cone, both of which are really easy to replace. So I was quick to get back to this. One thing that this launch highlighted though was the reliability of the launch pad system was not high enough to consistently fly rockets off of. So it needed to have a few problems solved before I could continue launching again. For some background, my launch pad is incredibly similar to the launch pad that the Antares launch vehicle uses. It has a tower that falls away from the rocket at T0 
and clamps that release the rocket at T0 as well. Once the engine comes up to thrust, these clamps let go and it leaves and goes flying. To fix the reliability with the launch pad, I had to fix four key problems that have plagued it since the beginning. The shake, the clamps, the disconnect, and the timing. All four of these contribute to the problems in the previous launch. Fixing the clamps required a complete redesign of the clamp system. The new clamps were based off the Antares launch clamps. If the pad isn't similar enough already, I ended up stealing the launch clamp design as well. They use an anvil that reaches over and grabs an aft skirt on the rocket. The new launch clamp fixture is also a lot stronger and more adjustable. It uses a series of dovetail sliders to allow each clamp to move in and out more freely and adapt to different sizes of rockets. After a few tests, it was obvious that this new clamp setup was a real winner. So I mounted it and moved on to the next problem. As the strong back falls away, it starts to gain energy. And once it reaches the hard stop, it has to release all of that energy. So the solution came in the form of something to absorb the energy. I chose a gas piston damper. These are ubiquitous in cars and furniture as well, which makes them really easy to get. Energy is absorbed in the piston and dissipated as the piston extends later on. This allows you to take a jarring motion and turn it into a smooth one. Next up, the timing. The timing of the launch pad has always been kind of a guesstimation. When to release, how long to wait before igniting the engine, all of that has been kind of up in the air and based on reviewing video footage for how long each event takes. Not anymore. Now I've moved to a smart launch pad concept where the launch pad knows when to release the rocket based on the situation it's detecting. I chose to use an analog microphone as the input for the system. It's listening for the engine to ignite, which is a very, very loud noise. Once it hears the engine ignite, then the launch clamps can release and only then. This prevents any unwanted release of the vehicle. It also makes sure that if the engine doesn't ignite, that the rocket cannot fall over and remain safely clamped down to the launch pad. This sensor is tuned to only hear the sound of the engine igniting and not any of the ambient noises like the wind or even the sound of the pad retracting. Finally, they're solving the disconnect issue. This one, I have a future workaround for that involves an entirely new umbilical connecting to the rocket at the tail end of it. With all the upgrades to the timing from the sensor system and the clamps, the original disconnect system is actually a lot more viable. This allows me to continue flying rockets until I get the new disconnect worked out and tested. With all of these problems worked out, it was finally time to head back out to the field and retest everything for real.
Overall, the flight was incredibly successful. The pad worked perfectly, the disconnect system worked perfectly, and everything that I upgraded worked exactly as intended. The only problem? My own operations. I forgot to arm the legs and the fins that deploy on the rock. Both of these are just things I need to be sure to remember next time. So it's always good to revise those procedures. So next up, I'll be flying higher than ever before on a longer burning engine. And with all these new upgrades, the thrust vector control mount will be able to handle it a lot better and the added core insulation will protect it over the duration of the flight. Failure is a, just a part of doing projects like this. So it's really important to learn from it and not get bogged down by it. It's important to take the lessons from failure and then roll those into future attempts. Only then can you really improve everything. And that's what makes the difference between anyone who designs something and someone who really develops it. When you develop something, you're trying to evolve it and improve it the entire time as opposed to just making it and moving on. Every failure leads me a little closer to having a more perfect product. And that's what I'm going for. So finally, I just wanna thank everyone at Patreon who's joined recently. I had a big influx of people and I have to say, I really appreciate it and all of you make all of this possible. A lot of the things that I've been able to buy to incorporate into these projects is only possible due to the help from Patreon, so I can't thank you all enough. I have all of my files available to build this launch pad and this rocket, as well as a couple others, on my Patreon available to anyone who wants to get started. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.